The thing about Stillman is, uh, from the outside, it's an absolutely beautiful building. Um, it appears to be prestigious, but on the inside, it holds beautiful things. I think what I love about this building most is it's a product of the Works Project Administration, the WPA. This was the major reconstruction of the New Deal, and its principal architect was a social worker, Harry Hopkins. Harry and Charles Stillman were very close, and when the WPA was looking to pour money into construction projects, they built Stillman Hall. They finished this building in 1937. They brought it in early and under budget. So our building was built for us by the, by the greatest social program that's ever been created in this country, the New Deal. When you come in the front doors off College Road, you see above the building, and every student who's ever come here has noticed those on the way in, six principles of a good life that were articulated by Charles Stillman. And it's always good to pause and reflect on the fact that you're at a building that was built for social work. Throughout this building, we have art that represents the tradition and the history of this building. Beginning up on the fourth floor, everybody that was here before the library was uh, combined knows the Emerson Burkhart murals. They were painted uh, as part of the Works Project Administration again. In addition to the WPA construction, there was a federal art project that supported artists and put them to work. And Burkhart painted uh, murals throughout the fourth floor that represented his view of 400 years of enlightenment in Western civilization. Down here, when we built this new wing in 2001, the state provides that a certain amount of the budget has to, has to include art. And when we did that, we wanted that to be consistent with the rest of the building. And so we have over here tile statues of Jane Addams, Whitney Young, and Harry Hopkins, of course, representing three great leaders in social work. So oh, this is a brand new old building, and that's what I like about it. This building was, as I said, built in 1937, but it's as up-to-date as any other building on this campus. And it's because of some of the things we've done around technology. Education today at Ohio State and the College of Social Work is very different than my undergraduate experience. So this technology has opened up this new way of engaging students in with real-time challenges, real-time issues in the field. We've been able to bring practitioners into the classroom using techniques like FaceTime. We can connect virtually with practitioners in the field who are right now working through cases, who are struggling with ethical dilemmas. And these are not online courses of old. It is a new way of learning. Lots of people don't understand what we can do as social workers and how we can do it with technology. As a professor teaching a face-to-face -face course on human trafficking, I was invited to widen the walls of Stillman Hall by offering an online course. Never did I imagine that my place here in this building on 1947 North College Road will result in me offering a class to 30,000 people and 188 nations. I have personally talked with people in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Japan, in Pakistan, in Iraq, in Morocco, in Mexico, in Australia, in Canada, and all over the United States of America. I have personally Skyped, telephoned, chatted, WhatsApped, and talked with people from all of these different countries about what social work is and what I'm doing as a social worker in the United States, in the College of Social Work, to fight human trafficking. One of the things everybody learns when they come to the College of Social Work is they're standing on great tradition. We're one of the earliest social work programs in the country. We're the oldest continually accredited program in a public university. You're standing on 12,000 people that came here before you, and that's a powerful tradition. That's a network that's nationwide, maybe international for you. We're right now in the McMillan Room. This room acknowledges Marge McMillan, who was a great faculty member some years ago. And when we built this new wing, a group of her students and alumni gave money to name this room in her honor. Our undergraduate office is named for Jeanette Zuponsek, who was a great undergraduate instructor here and undergraduate program director through here through the 70s. We have other rooms throughout the building that are named for people who made a really big difference in someone's life as a student. And then by extension, those students went out and made a massive difference in clients' lives for years. So we celebrate our legacy. It's a great legacy, one of the greatest in the country, and we want to continue to reflect the difference that our people have made over the years.